be in prayer for the sellers family. Anybody else we need to add to the prayer list this morning? Anybody got a praise or word of testimony?
you would empty me of myself and fill me with your Holy Spirit as I try to preach your word this morning. Lord, I pray that you would bless this offering now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Chapter number 6, 
beginning in verse number 66. The Bible says, From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then this next verse, verse number 68, is a passage that's recorded in all four of the Gospels. Peter's response says, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we are sure, we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. And if thou don't light your fire, your pilot's done gone now. <laughs> thou art the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen twelve? He chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. You can be seated this morning. Chapter 6 of the Gospel of John, Jesus is claiming to be Christ the Savior. In fact, he claims to be the bread of life. And we're going to come back to that thought in a couple of weeks in chapter number 6, but Jesus is claiming to be the Christ, the Savior, the Son of the living God. And the Jews are as they always are, looking for a sign that He is who He says He is. Now keep in mind, they've already heard about the 5,000 people that were fed, and that wasn't sign enough. In chapter 6 and verse number 22, I believe it is, they, they've already found out that the disciples were in one boat, and Jesus wasn't in the boat with the disciples, but then whenever he got over to the other side, Jesus was in the boat with the disciples. So they knew he worked some kind of a miracle out there on the Sea of Galilee, and yet they're still asking for a sign. The last Sunday, we looked at verse number 62, where Jesus is, I, I sense he's starting to get frustrated. This is in the, in, in the Bible. This isn't King James. It's just in my words, but it's as if Jesus is saying, How, what else do you need to believe upon the name of the Son of God? And in verse number 62, Jesus said, uh, Jesus said, what in, and, uh, and if he shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. If you see the Son of God resurrected and back into heaven, would that be enough of a sign for you to believe? By the way, just as a reminder from last week, I'm glad that the God which was is the God which still is. Amen. And in verse, after all of that, in verse number 66, it says, From that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Verse number 67 that we read, Jesus turns to the twelve, uh, the twelve apostles, the twelve disciples, and he asks a question. And it's the title of our sermon this morning, Will ye also, will ye also go away? It's a clear question. This is something they could understand when he asked this. This wasn't like a parable that some of the parables that Jesus gave where they could say, we don't understand what in the world you're talking about. This isn't some big doctrinal uh, theme or statement uh, that they could be confused about like the one where Jesus told Nicodemus, unless a man be born, except he be born again, and Nicodemus said, I don't understand what in the world you're talking about. But this was something that was crystal clear. Will ye also go away? It's clear. It's a clear question. Are you going to walk away from the Lord your God? 
It's a clear question. It's a causative question. It demands thought and introspection and self-examination. For those disciples, they had to they had to weigh it out in their mind. When he asked, are you also going to go away? They had to bear this out in their mind. If they were to walk away from the Lord, they could save themselves some trouble. The Jews sought to kill him because he didn't fit in with their religious system. The Romans would seek to kill him because they didn't like any talk about a king coming and possibly overthrowing the Roman Empire. And so they could save themselves a lot of trouble and a lot of ridicule if they would just walk away now. On the other hand, if they was to find themselves halfway across the Sea of Galilee in a storm, he sure was handy to have in the boat with him. So they had to weigh this out in their mind. You're going to walk away from God. I've been thinking a lot about the Old Testament character Job. And Job is a Christian hero if there ever was one because he maintained and finished with integrity. And I thought about Job and and, I, and I'll get back to the text here in a minute, but just a, think, just a thought about Job. He had no Bible. He had no independent Baptist church. He had no indwelling of the Holy Ghost. All that he had was that the devil left him was a wife that was no good. And yet he maintained his integrity. How, what did Job do? He decided that he was just going to trust God, the one that he knew about. He was just going. He decided that it was better to just go with God. So, causes us to inspect our own lives. For us, the question: Will you also go away? bears out some thinking in our minds. I, I can just quit. I can just walk away from the will of God and from the church of God and the things of God. I can just walk away from all of that and live life on my own terms. But on the other hand, these years walking with the Lord sure have been good. It's a clear question. But it's a heavy question. Will ye also walk, go away? Let's look at the text this morning. First of all, we see in this passage of Scripture the confession of a saint. In verse number 68, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, that Christ, he says, thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. The Apostle Peter in this text speaks of, on behalf of uh, believers, those who are saved, the redeemed of God, those who have come to realize that Jesus is our only hope of forgiveness of our sin and our only hope of heaven when we die and they that have put their faith and trust in Him. Amen. He states in this confession simply this, there is no other. He, he states it in the form of a question. He says, to whom shall we go? There, there is no other. There's no other Christ and no other Son of the living God that we can go to. If you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior this morning, I would, I would simply ask you this clear question. Who else can save you? Who are you waiting on to come down the road to save your soul? Do you remember people that are saved, the people of God? Do you remember when you realized that Jesus was the only hope that you had? Yeah. 
If I, if I don't trust Him, if He doesn't save my soul, I'm going to die and go to hell because Mama can't do nothing about it and Daddy can't do nothing about it and the preacher down at the house of God said he couldn't do anything about it and the Sunday school teacher couldn't do anything about it. It's Jesus or nobody. Amen. There is no other promise. There is no other one that we can believe in. He said, Thou hast the words of life. The words of eternal life. Let me ask you something this morning, friends. If this Bible is not where we find the truth about heaven and hell and the truth about salvation and the truth about God's grace, then where is it? Where is it? There's some folks that preach in a different message than we are. There's some folks around that are preaching a different gospel than we believe in. But I tell you, they didn't get it from the Word of God. The Bible, it has the words of eternal life. It's the Word of God. We can believe it. We can trust it. It's good from cover to cover. It's all about Christ and it's true every word. He states this, there is none other that we can go to to find help in times of trouble. To whom shall we go? He's all we've got. And He's all we need. And this is the testimony of a born again believer. He could walk away from God but he can't get out from under the blood. He can't undo what the Holy Spirit has done in his life. He can't, uh, he can't uh, uh, remove himself from the power of the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad when you get saved you can't get out from under the blood? Amen. He can walk away from God, but he's never going to be happy or satisfied that way. He can try and walk away from God, but in his heart he knows he'll just be alone in the world because there's nobody else in this world that can do for him what God can do for him. Amen. Friend, if you're not saved this morning, you need to know that there is no other name under heaven. By the way, the Apostle Peter said that too. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is no other way. It's Christ or nothing. And if you are saved today, you need to know that you can walk away from the Lord's will and you can walk away from His work and you can walk away from the church, but nothing, nothing, nothing will fill that need and that void in your life except walking in fellowship with God. The confession of a saint. Peter said, well, all I know is, is we don't have anybody else we can go to. Right. And number two in this text, we see the conjecture of Simon Peter. In verse number 69, uh, look at it again. He said, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, that Christ, the Son of the living God. I want you to focus on this phrase right here. He says, and we believe. Notice that we. This was an assumption on the Apostle Peter's part that everyone in that circle of twelve, everyone in the church we could say, that every one of them, this was his assumption that they were all saved and desiring to follow after the Lord. But did you notice verse number 70 where Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Verse 71, he explains he's talking about Judas. Peter assumed that they were all saved. Peter assumed that they were all going to walk with the Lord. What was that assumption based on? based upon a profession of faith. 
Judas was uh, Judas had professed to be a Christian. Can I get an amen right here? You can come and profess Jesus Christ as your Savior and still not be saved. You can say whatever you think your mama wants to hear. You can say whatever the preacher thinks or you think he wants to hear or the church wants to hear. You can repeat a little prayer that you read on the back of a track or in the back of uh, 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 some book somewhere and, and, and you can make that profession of faith, that public profession and still be just as lost as you were when you came down to the front of the church. What was he basing this assumption on? Upon a way of life, perhaps. Judas went where Jesus had went. Judas had walked, as far as physically, he had walked with the Lord up until this time. He had, for all intents and purposes from our viewpoint, he had followed Christ. He had walked with Him. And I remind you this morning that you can live a certain way, and you can live by certain codes of conduct and morals and ethics and still not be saved. Let me tell you something. We work in the workplace and we go up and down the roads and we have people in our homes and in our families and in our circle of friends that we would say, hey, these are good people. These are good people. They treat people right. They're honest in their business dealings. We would say they are good people. But if they died today, they'd split hell wide open. Because they never trusted Christ. This assumption, based upon a profession of faith, based upon a certain observation of the way that Judas had lived his life, based upon a position that he held in the church. Judas was the church treasurer. He carried the money bag around. Let me also remind you this morning that you can make a good church member and not be saved. You can be on the church roll and not be saved. You can be baptized, y'all help me now, and not be saved. We take people at their word because that's all we have. Isn't that right? I mean, if you tell me you're saved, I believe you. That's all that we can do is take people at their word. But we cannot be so strong in our assumptions that we stop preaching the gospel and that we stop preaching repentance. How many people in, sitting in church have thought that they were saved for years and ended up getting saved later on? I don't want to be a pessimistic preacher. Some of the old time preachers got into this deal where they were trying to decide how many percentage of the people on the church rolls were really saved and really weren't. And I really wish they hadn't done that. One preacher said, well, I believe only 75% of all church members, or 75% of church members are lost. I, I'm not going to get into that. The reality of it is we don't know and neither did they. But I'm not so naive either that when we give an invitation week after week after week after week and nobody comes forward and nobody says anything about being saved and nobody says anything about being right with God, I'm not so naive as to assume that everybody in here week after week after week is saved and right with God. I don't assume that everybody in here is saved. I don't assume that every believer is right with God. When nobody comes week after a week, I assume that there's some people in here with white knuckles that have gripped the back of the pew knowing what they should have done and refused to do. That's what I assume. The conjecture. Simon Peter. And then number three. There's the certainty concerning some. 
The reality that we find in this passage is some will go away from the Lord. Verse 66, some of them already have. We have documented cases that we could bring up, and we're not going to, but documented cases in this church. I'm talking about the people that we know and have lived with and been around, of people who stood in this church and professed faith in Jesus Christ and got baptized and then at some point walked out the doors and away from God. Some already have walked away. The sad reality is some more will walk away if Jesus doesn't come. It is the unfortunate reality that some, perhaps even some in this church today, uh, that as soon as they get out from underneath their parents, as soon as they feel... Uh, freedom in their spirit, they will just stop pursuing God's will for their lives. Walk away. Some will go away because they're not saved. Can I say this this morning? I believe it's of utmost importance to get our kids in church when they're young. Amen. Get them exposed to the gospel when they are young. Why is that? Point them to Christ when they're young. Why? Because as they get older and the world begins to pull them in another direction, it may be harder for them to get saved. It's not going to be harder for God to save them, but it may be harder for them to hear and receive the gospel. Some will go away because they're not saved. Another sad reality, some will go away saved, but giving in to the desires of the flesh. Giving in and developing a love for the world. Paul said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Was Demas saved? I don't know. Possible he could have been, and then he just left. Peter is getting a hard, a dose of hard reality. Some will go away from the Lord. You can't assume that everybody in the church and that everybody that you know is saved and trying to do the will of God. Some will go away from the Lord. This wasn't just the Lord trying, uh, wanting to be negative. But this was the Lord speaking to the Apostle Peter who would need this dose of reality later on in his own life. You remember when Peter denied the Lord three times. The night they came and got him out of the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus said before the rooster crows, you will have denied me three times. Oh no, Lord. But he did. The Gospel of Luke said when that rooster crowed the third time that Jesus caught his eye and looked at him. Yeah. I think immediately Peter was answering this question in his mind. Wilt thou, will ye also go away? What about the time after Jesus had ascended on up or, or had been resurrected uh, from the grave and, 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 and the, the disciples uh, decided with Peter in the forefront, decided, hey, enough of this ministry stuff. I'm just going to go back to fishing. I wonder how many times those words echoed in Peter's mind. Will you also go away? You see, the words of the Lord resonate in the heart of the believer. The young believer that's fed up with mom and daddy's rules. And fed up with the old fashioned ideas and expectations that they're having to live with. And they're tired. They're fed up with just being good. Y'all remember those days? Fed up with it. And the devil says, you don't have to live like that. 
You can do whatever you want to do. Your parents don't have any rule over you. That preacher in that church don't have any authority over you. You do what you want to do. You can hide it, and they'll never even find out about it. I can tell you something. You can hide stuff from your mom and daddy, but you're not going to hide it from God. His eyes roam to and fro throughout the earth and sees the evil and the good. The devil says, you do what you want to, kids. But for that believer, that one that's saved, there's that still small voice that resonates. Will you also go away? For that family, that, that, that couple that is, that is tired of trying to make things work at home, tired of trying to keep the family together, tired of the daily routine of work and home and bills and problems and the devil gets on, on in your ear and he'll say he'll say you don't have to live like this you don't have to do this you can go find you another family you can go start you another family you can find another wife or another husband and, and just start all over. hey the whole world is doing it you can do it too but there's this still small voice in the believer will you also go away For the preacher that's fed up, fed up with confrontation in the church, fed up with a lack of interest from the church, fed up with ministry, and the devil says, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. There's other ways you can feed your family. There's other things you can be doing. But there's that still small voice that says, will you also go away? So each one of these disciples and each one of us is left with a decision to make. Am I going to quit on God? Maybe you need to be saved this morning. Maybe, maybe you don't even know the Lord. Maybe you need to be saved this morning. I want you to know that Jesus made it possible for you to be forgiven of your sin and to have a home in heaven when you die. Jesus, this one, this that, that Son of the living God, that Christ, that came and lived a sinless life and died on the cross of Calvary and shed His precious blood that's able to wipe away the sins of the whole world. He shed His blood for you, got up from the grave on the third day, and now lives to intercede for you. Listen, that Jesus has made it possible through the Gospel, through the Gospel, through the work of redemption, for you to be saved and have all of your sins forgiven. All that we have to do is just trust Him. Just trust Him. Would you be saved this morning? Maybe you're saved this morning and you're struggling within as to whether or not you're going to surrender your heart and your life to the will of God, whatever that may be. Maybe you're struggling with that today. And the sad reality is some will likely leave this church house today with white knuckles, knowing they should have done something. And refusing to do it. That doesn't have to be you. That doesn't have to be you. You can leave the house of God today with peace in your heart, knowing that you're saved. Thank God I'm saved. And I know I'm saved. You can leave with the peace of God, knowing you're saved, and knowing that you have surrendered your life to whatever God wants you to do. What's your need this morning? It's a question all of us have to ask. Will you also go away? Let's stand. We're going to sing a verse of invitation. Number 81. Number 81.